Hi guys, so this is Mila with Girl in the Kitchen over at Love That Spice in downtown Highland Park again. We just went live and I had to turn it off because something was not uh, functioning right with Facebook. So we had to turn it off. So we're going to say hello again to the lovely shop owner that's letting us host Facebook Live here. It is Marlene. Hi again. Oh my God, I just realized something. I have a teapot on my head. Yes, we do. <laughs> what a cute teapot. Because we sell, because they sell tea and they custom make some spices, obviously. <laughs> so today, <laughs> today we're making in thirty minutes. We're making three meals, all of them one pan, and all of them very, very uh, novice chef friendly. So if you are a new chef and you are unfamiliar with certain ingredients or you're unfamiliar with your talents, don't sweat it because we got you covered in this one. Okay. So before I announce what we're actually going to do for you today, I want Marlena to tell us a little bit about Cajun Spice. So Cajun Spice, you see it in supermarkets all the time. It's a pretty, um, you know, it's a pretty classic spice that you see every grocery store has their own or has their own um, brand. So Marlena's going to tell you a little bit about how she makes hers and what goes into it and why hers is better and actually more flavorful than all the rest. Okay, here it is in a nutshell. We take all of our spices in whole, and then we grind them up. So when we grind them up, um, we add only pure ingredients. We do not add any fillers, no preservatives, no anti-caking, no nothing. So what you're actually getting is 100% pure spices. So when you go to a grocery store and you get your spices, you will notice that if you put mine next to the grocery store spices, you'll notice that the smell is more intense from my spices and the flavor is like 10 times more intense from the spices. So in other words, get your spices fresh. So this is the Louisiana Cajun that we're going to use tonight. And then my girl Mila is going to take over and prepare three meals in 30 minutes. And here she goes. All right, guys, sorry, I need to grab my laptop um, so that if anybody's asking questions or anything like that, I can just pop right up and um, write any links in or, or anything you need. So we are going to start with this lovely chicken drumsticks with potatoes. Um, and what we're going to put on it is the Cajun spice. A little bit of salt, and we're using, what kind of salt we're using, Chamberlain? Pink Himalayan sea salt. Pink Himalayan sea salt. So it's a lot more natural. There's people lining up outside the windows. It's actually <laughs> quite a party here tonight. Yes, it is. Um, so we're going to put some salt, some garlic powder, olive oil, and... Cajun spice. Cajun spice. Woohoo. Obviously. Let's get it going. I forgot about right. that one. <laughs> so we're going to start with that. And then, guys, we have... Um, I'm going to show you what we have. We have a little, follow us, ta-da! We have a little countertop oven, and it's preheated to 450 degrees so that um, it's ready to go. We're cooking at a high temperature because we have a lot of things to make today and not a lot of time. This chicken will be done in 30 minutes, but don't forget two very important things that sometimes people forget when they're cooking in, <coughs> excuse me, in ovens. The first thing is that this is a convection oven. Even though it's a little oven, it's a convection oven. What convection means is that it circulates the air around. So your food will cook up to 30% faster. We're also cooking at 450 degrees. We're getting the temperature really high, scorching high, because we want our food to cook fast and we want it to cook efficiently. So the convection is gonna make it cook efficiently and the high temperature is gonna cook it, is gonna, um, make it cook faster, okay? Well, you can do the same thing at home in the regular But oven, you can right? absolutely, yeah, okay, absolutely. Right. So you guys okay. can do, here, come squeeze in here so we're both here. There we go, hi. So you can totally do this in a regular oven, um, but we're in a spice shop, so we're not, we don't have a big convection no, commercial oven. <laughs> but we do have this thing and it works really well and I've made this recipe with many um, different ovens. They all work the same, the only thing is Something very strange actually happened. So apparently the chicken cooks faster than these beautiful little potatoes. So the way to solve that problem is, A, if you're not really crunched for time, just take your chicken out so it doesn't continue cooking, and then um, let the potatoes cooking. Or B, your other option here is just cut them up much smaller. So I got like little tiny baby potatoes, and I cut them in quarters. And so we're going to assume doesn't always work but we no. will assume <laughs> that these are going to cook in um 
in 30 minutes, which at my house, typically 90% of the time, it totally does. So what's going on here, Melina? I'm gonna have you do this if you don't mind. No, not at all. I'm just going to, I'm gonna switch the camera so I can see Marlene, okay? There we go, because this will give me an opportunity to drink some wine. <laughs> and the reason well, here's I'm, your cup, honey. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so the reason I'm having Marlena do this and not me is because I'm not exaggerating I'll when I on say the potatoes. Yes, please. I've Anna a little bit on the chicken as well. I've made this recipe a hundred times. Marlena never has. And so I want you guys to see exactly how easy it is. So she's gonna put some Cajun spice on there. What she just did is she made a paste. That's what happens when you combine anything liquidy or oil with any other kind of um, spices. So we're doing Cajun spice on there. We're doing a little bit of Himalayan salt. We're doing a little bit of garlic powder and black pepper. And that's it. And then they're going in the oven, guys. Like, that's I it. I some on the other side. Yes. And look. my flavor. Yes. But always. I'm changing the gloves. See? Because See? we want to keep it sanitary. So always remember to season both sides and we did pre-oil this pan right yes yeah so see guys so here is the reason that this is considered a one pot dish the actual name of this dish if you guys want it it is on my site on girlandthekitchen.com the actual site is one pot cajun done see one pot cajun okay. and wine roasted uh chicken and the reason i'm going to show this to you guys oh lovely okay into our lovely oven it goes guys that's it i just love this oven <laughs> this is so cute it is cute so cute okay so i'm switching you guys back to me hello so the reason that um it is wine roasted is because about the last i can't get this right okay do you want to just do yeah. this one? so the reason that this is a um a wine roast is because it lasts like 30 minutes we're going to, not 30 minutes, just kidding. The last 10 minutes, we're going to put a little bit of red wine in there. And so it creates a sauce in the pan on its own. So you don't dirty up multiple pans and you have potatoes, you have chicken, all in one pan. So it's super duper easy and ridiculously delicious. And like I said, it's all done in one pan. I can't take all the credit. My really great friend, Alex, um, actually made this dish for his twins when I came over many years ago. And it smelled delicious back then. I did eat chicken, and I swear I had like four chicken drumsticks. They were that good, and they were so simple. So I'm like, everybody needs to have simple dishes like this in the repertoire. And when I say that this is how I cook, this is 95% of the dishes that I make at home. They're simple, they're one pan, and they're delicious. That's all you need. Boku flavor, minimal time, minimal effort, because nobody has a lot of time anymore. And so I reserve my time for my weekends when I do throw my huge gla glamorous dinners, okay? So we're moving on to our next one, which is pr another recipe that I've been making for such a long time. I actually made this recipe for my mom. My mom loved how I used to make salmon. Salmon was actually one of the first things I cooked. I was probably 15 years old. And I always made this for her. And she actually had a little toaster oven because our oven busted on us. So. Um, she always used a little toaster oven like this, so that's what we're using today. So I'm gonna grab gloves as well, so just move your way back. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. So I got gloves. So with this dish, guys, this is just salmon. So since it's just me and Marlena, and we do have a little oven, I can only fit um, about three salmons in here, and these are like five to six ounce portions of salmon. So more than enough for one individual person. Um, and then we have about a pound and a half, maybe a little less of asparagus in here. Guys, these are already trimmed actually, but if you don't know how to check for, I, I'm having technical issues with gloves now. If you don't know how to check for doneness, what you do is, see how these are already snapped so there's no woodsy stalks. Those woodsy stalks, they don't cook very well, okay? So what you do is you take them in between your fingers and then you do that. And where it naturally snaps is where you need to get rid of it. So once you do one, you can kind of assume that's approximately where all the rest are gonna be. So then just line them up and you just chop them up and you're done, okay? Super easy. Again, we're gonna go in with our olive oil. You can use any other oil you like. Um, it doesn't really matter, but uh, I prefer olive oil. It's kind of like our universal cooking, sometimes coconut oil, but this is what we have here, so that's what we're using. So a little bit on the um, asparagus and a little bit on the salmon, okay? And then we are going to put 
Oh, there's a lot of people walking around today in Highland Park, guys. If you guys are in Highland Park, give us a shout out so that we know you're locals. So we're putting some on here. So are you using the same spice for this dish as well? Pretty much. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you're doing all of the recipes with one spice. Plate. Yeah, that's the whole, that's what we're doing today. So you're we're getting your money's worth, in other words. One spice, three <laughs> meals, 30 minutes. That's I our like shindig it. today. I like it. So guys, that was Cajun spice, that was garlic powder, and now I'm going in with a little bit of our Himalayan salt. We're going to rub that in. Um, you want it to rub in for two reasons. One, as Marlena said, the more you kind of work it in, the more of the flavor will come up. But two, you want to create a paste. And so see, I'm kind of, you know, recycle. Use the pan. You have a ton of spices in the pan. So you put, I can't speak today. Put the spices that are in the pan on your fish. I'm going to do the back ends as well. And so as you can tell, our fish has already been uh, de-skinned. So um, that being said, you still want to put it down on the side where the fish would have been, where the skin would have been, because it just looks prettier that way. Again, we're going with garlic powder, salt, and a little bit of black pepper. And notice I'm using one hand for when I touch the fish, and another hand for when I use my spices, because we do not want to cross contaminate. Yay! Yay! We learned something. <laughs> Don't give yourself food poisoning. Yay! Okay. So these babies, you can touch with the same hand because they're cooking. Anything that the fish is touching is going to be cooked so all bacteria is cooked out. Okay, done. Guys, what, like a minute and a half, we're done, right? Yay. So this is going back into our oven and that's it. So that's gonna take about 15 minutes. I am actually gonna set a timer for 15 minutes. And the reason we're doing that is because of that approximate time we're also going to be throwing in that red wine with our chicken because it would have been in about 20 minutes at that point so one of the really important things oh hello everybody um if you guys are just joining us we are in downtown highland park at love that spice with my lovely marlena partner in crime who is the owner of this great establishment um and i of course am mila from girl in the kitchen and today she is actually supplying all of our spices so she's supplying my Cajun spice that she so kindly <laughs> blended this morning for me so it's fresh and I get to take it home too so this is what I'll be using she actually said this will knock my socks off and I just smelled it and I officially like I need to sneeze <laughs> ah! but it's better than the slush on berries that we did last time I was here where my mouth got numb um anyhow moving along so the reason that it's important to time out how you cook is because of efficiency so here goes. I got you. Uh, <laughs> oh, you lightweight. <laughs> all right, sorry. Right. So uh, the reason it's so important for you guys to time your food efficiently is because one of the best parts of cooking quickly is knowing how long things take. So if your chicken is going to take 30 minutes and that's the longest thing you have to cook, you know you got to get that in there right away, right? And then the fish is only going to take 15 minutes. So halfway into your cooking time, you're sticking your fish in. Everything's going to be done at the same time. Which brings us to number three. Number three is um, one of my favorite dishes to make. And that's because I get to mess with people. So it is a vegan. Don't, everybody just calm down. Okay? All it means is that it's dairy-free and it's meat-free. And you know what? You have two animal proteins in there. You got a fish and you got a chicken. Okay? It's not going to kill you to have a little bit of a pasta with a dairy-free sauce. And I promise you, it's got oodles and oodles and oodles of flavor. Nobody's ever going to know that this is an Alfredo sauce. I actually just made... I'm going <coughs> to... Damn it. Hey, listen. That's what you call fresh spices. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Damn it. It's not a real basic <laughs> This is why this is Facebook Live, because we get <laughs> nose and stuff. <laughs> That's what you call fresh. You won't get that from a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I woke it up. So, oh what did we learn today? Do not <laughs> snore your Cajun spice. <laughs> right. It's not a good idea. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I think we might be in the clear. So, um, the reason that I love this dish is because people usually cannot tell that it's vegan. It's super creamy. It's white. And 
<laughs> okay, I think we're done. That's hilarious. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's uber creamy. It's white. And it's got um, it's got the same flavors as Alfredo sauce does. So when you have a good Alfredo sauce, what really stands out to you? The shallots, the garlic, right? And so funny story is that Alfredo sauce is not Italian. Alfredos do not Alfredos. Italians do not cook with heavy creams and butters. They cook with light sauces and lots of garlic and lots of chilies and they cook healthy. That's why the Mediterranean diet is a Mediterranean diet. So. When you ask an Italian, how do they make their Alfredo sauce? I'm not talking about Jersey Italians. No offense, love Jersey. But the real Italians, they make their Alfredo with nothing because they'll tell you that Alfredo's name is of their brother. Alfredo <laughs> sauce does not exist in Italy, okay? So this is kind of my faux Alfredo sauce and it's made out of cashews. Cashews is very frequently used in vegan cooking and when you soak them and you blend them up, they make an amazing cream sauce. So. What I have done in here, just so you guys know, is I have sauteed up one shallot, four garlic cloves, salt, pepper, and I've stuck them on a frying pan, just sweated them out, and then I put them in here with a little bit of red chili flakes. And then in here, you guys can see we had ca um, raw cashews soaking. So they soak for 30 minutes in boiling hot water, and then they get soft enough to become really, really creamy. Um, this is one of the things that I have in my fridge every single week. I use it for dips, I use it for sauces, I use it for soups, I use it for everything. And this particular recipe, which is a vegan fettuccine, uh, vegan dairy free fettuccine alfredo on my site, is on there since Monday. So if you go on girlandthekitchen.com, it's right there on the home page. So that's the recipe that we're going to be using as our base for our Cajun pasta today. Um, just so you guys know, the recipe for the chicken and the potatoes is on my blog. However, the other two recipes are not. So if you guys want these recipes, they will be in your inbox uh, next, actually tomorrow. Don't so, they have to sign up for it though? Yeah, so if you oh, go okay. to girlandthekitchen.com, on the right hand side, there's a little bar that says subscribe here. And if you subscribe there, as soon as uh, the, I post this recipe, you will actually get a personal email blast. And the other great thing is I do, yes, Marlene has a question. question. Yes. So if they sign up for the email blast, yep. will they get recipes frequently from you? Yeah, so Are they, okay. the great thing about email blasts is that I don't bombard your emails. I actually did a survey and everybody said that they want um, an email every single time that I do a new recipe. So okay. you only get them when I have a major announcement or I have um, a giveaway or I have like an ebook my members get access to my ebooks first and foremost and I actually have one coming out very very soon so and it's gonna be free to you guys so this is gonna be my first of I think two or three that I'm gonna do free and then my other ebooks are actually gonna be paid for um, but you guys always get discounts on anything that I promote you guys will, if for instance, if I'm working with a shop like with Marlena, Marlena already said that all the people who subscribe today and leave me a little message or a comment, they will get a coupon for 15% off anything in the store. And I'm telling you right now, there's loads to buy. If Even if you don't like spices, if you don't cook, she has custom teas. So, and if you don't like teas and you like to cook, then she has custom spices. So it's a whole plethora of things that you guys can get. And 15% off goes a very, very long way here because I ranked up my bill really, really quickly. So I'm pretty sure you guys will too. <laughs> Anyhow, so go on girlinthekitchen.com on the right-hand column. There's a little thing that says subscribe. I will not send you junk mail. You will never be spammed. It is just a direct way for me to communicate with you guys. And if something is big in my life or I'm taking a break from vlogging or I'm gonna be vlogging five days a week now, whatever it is, you guys will always be in the know. So it's just a good way for me to connect with you guys because Facebook, let's face it, is not always the best of direct messaging. And so this way, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, you guys can always comment or email me, okay? I'm done with my spiel now. So this lovely uh, cashew sauce is going to become creamy. It's gonna get loud up in here in about two seconds. Um...
has a lot of water in it. There is a reason for this. A, when it hits the heat, it will, what happens when water hits heat? It evaporates. <laughs> so that's number one. Number two, we're actually, like when I said it's one pot, it's one pot. I have fresh pasta for you guys here today. If you guys have never used fresh pasta, start because it's the bomb. It's in the refrigerated section. Um, they don't. They have like tortellini, they have ravioli, and they have lots of like fettuccine, linguine, all that. They don't have like penne or anything like that. But they have these, and it takes a minute to cook, and so it's going to be perfect because once our sauce is done, we're going to throw this in there, and it's going to be literally a one pan meal. It's going to be delicious and perfect because fresh pasta only takes about a minute to cook. So before we start on our Cajun spice pasta, um, let's check on our fish and our chicken, okay? So it's working, it's working. Can you guys see there's no light in here? But It's working, we're working guys, mm. we're working. We still have plenty of time too, so we're going good. All right, so we're gonna start our pasta. So in here, we are gonna put some olive oil. Do we have more? Yeah. Um. Yeah, hang on guys. Having going to the oh, shelf. She's taking it to the shelf. To get more olive oil. We have more olive oil. Technical difficulties there. Okay. There it is. Oh, the olive tap. I know that place. Yeah, they were in Highland Park, but they closed down. Oh, so. that's right. Yeah. So, guys, if you have any questions for Marlena, or if you want her to actually... Mail some spices. You mail spices, right? Oh, of course. We ship. We deliver. Yep. So you can oh, yeah. go to lovethatspice.com. Easy enough. Lovethatspice.com. See how popular I am? <laughs> so in here, going onions, red onion. Okay, here that sizzle. We want that. So we're putting onions in there. And I've already cut these babies up. Guys, you can do this at home. And you can cut them up. And you will be done in 30 minutes, I promise. Because I have. But because I'm talking so long, I'm taking away a good 10 minutes away. So um, that's why I cut them up ahead of time so that I can talk and not frantically try and cook, okay? So, oops, that's the skin. And then we're gonna put some red peppers in there. And we are gonna, you wanna, yeah, perfect. Thank you, Marlena. And Marlena just increased the heat a little bit. I'm gonna give my hands a little rinse because I'm gonna dip them into We're gonna do some Himalayan salt, not too much, just a bit, okay? Some garlic powder, don't ask why. I love garlic powder, I love garlic. If people knew how much <laughs> garlic I would use, really, it would be ridiculous, you guys would think. How do I ever kiss my husband? I do. Yeah, he doesn't care about He doesn't breath. care. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna let that go, and I actually left my spatula at home. So today we're just gonna use a nice spoon. And remember guys, there's already going to be loads and loads of flavor in there because we have that <coughs> sauce, that Alfredo sauce that we made, okay? And uh, Marlena has actually never tried that sauce, so I'm going to take the camera away. Now it's going to be a little bit more watery than I'm used to, but nonetheless, I think you'll get the flavor to come out. So I would like, here, just dip your fork in there and taste it. So switching. Mm. Is that good? It's good. So when it thickens needs up, a little salt. yeah, it needs a little salt. But when it thickens up, you can see how it can be an Alfredo, Alfredo sauce. sauce. Oh yeah, right? Sure. It's just a little nuttier. Yes. Than Alfredo sauce. And, and the it's gonna is mellow. It's it's better. It's, it's richer. Better. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna mellow out. So once that hits the heat, it's gonna mellow out. So I'm saying hello to everybody. <gasps> Look how many people we have today. <laughs> You guys notice how when I get excited, my voice goes up like five octaves? Ah. Imagine living with me. That's what my husband... Oh, now the phone is blowing up up in here. Okay. Hi, Marina. I am rocking it. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Dominica. Thank you, Laura. Hello. Muna, hello. Um, Sabrina, I'm so glad you could make it in today. And everybody else, hello that you haven't said hello to us yet. So we're cooking up a storm here. Um, while we're cooking, if you guys have any questions or, hang on, let me switch. There we go. If you guys have any questions for me or Marlene about spice, about cooking, about life, about kids, about anything, feel free to shoot it out. 
So I just made this dish this week, and my husband and I gave it to my husband to take. And um, all his friends thought it was a really heavy Alfredo sauce, and then I told them it was healthy. So they were actually blown away. They didn't think it was vegan. So I'm glad that carnivores and non-carnivores alike <laughs> relish in the beauty of a vegan Alfredo sauce. <laughs> there we go. Okay, guys, so we're just about done. We're going to want him to sweat out a little bit because, remember, as soon as that um, sauce hits it, they're also going to start to wilt a little bit. Guys, and by the way, if you look in the comments, you're going to see that Girl in the Kitchen, the one-pot wine roasted chicken thighs, is in the comments. So you have the recipe right there. And if you also click on that link, you can go ahead and you will be you will be taken to um, the same page where on the right hand side it'll say you can subscribe. So all in due time. Okay, so we're cooking. What's how long have we been cooking for? I want to see how fast. So we have been cooking for. Um, it's actually been about twenty five minutes because I started us about five minutes too late because we had technical difficulties. So if you guys saw the one where we were having technical difficulties, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think you did because Facebook likes to uh, play with us there, I think. Okay, so that's almost good to go. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna give it a splash of white wine. And all those brown bits that are starting to brown up in there, they're going to come up with that. And before I put the white wine in there, I'm going to put some garlic in there. So the reason I don't put the garlic and onions together is because garlic cooks a lot faster than onions and peppers do. And I don't want it to cook that fast. So we're going to just grate it. And this is what I use. So... If you guys are frequent visitors of my blog, you know I talk about my micro planner all the time. I love how fast and easy it is to do garlic and ginger with. It just works out so much better. It's a trick I learned uh, years and years ago. Um, and like all my tricks are usually derived from laziness. So that's what this is derived from. So you really like garlic, huh? I love garlic. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell. You've only used nine cloves. I know, clothes. I've only used nine cloves. <laughs> but guys, just, you know, those were like really little. Like they weren't, they weren't big cloves of garlic. So see all that brown stuff underneath? That's goodness. That's not burned. You want that. And this technique, once you're on the pan. See that? So this technique is actually called deglazing. Okay, and at the same time, I have four scallions chopped up here, and I'm going to put half of them in here, again, because they do cook faster than um, everything else, just like the garlic does, so we want it a little bit. Oops, I just got onion on the elephant. Sorry, bro. All right, so let that go. We're going to turn up our heat just a little bit more. And we're using an electric skillet, and electric skillets, we can't, electric skillets aren't as uh, powerful as gas typically, like little ones like this. So at home, this would actually go a lot faster for you guys. I have done this at home, like I said. It does go faster. So while this is deglazing and evaporating away, let's check on our, what do we call it? Oh, that is hot. Oh, look at that. Look at you. Perfect timing. So, we don't have... Um, gloves today for to take it out or because so, we forgot <laughs> we forgot so th this looks done and beautiful so should i slice the lemon yeah so we're gonna slice our lemons typically guys i put the lemons on as it's cooking but i forgot see look at that isn't that pretty guys all one pan so now i'm gonna pour a little bit of our red wine in there we're not gonna go crazy it's just gonna be a little bit so, like I said, the recipe has all the measurements. And yes, please get it on the chicken. Okay, it's about a cup. We're going to put that right in there. Okay. Clean while you cook. Mm -hmm. That's like one of my biggest things. If you guys clean while you cook, you're not going to have as big of a mess to clean up. So, I'm going to take my knife and um, I forgot a cutting board. This is like such a disaster. So, 
We've been through hell come back today. Marlena is not <laughs> feeling well, and I forgot everything because I was in a rush. So, but on the brighter note, it just goes to show you that you can make really great things with not a lot of ingredients and not a lot of time. So and we're gonna sick. and sick. <laughs> Although I think that's like what the husbands are for. So huh. Huh. I have my husband's actually really good to me when he's when I'm sick. If he he actually has made chicken soup for me. But sometimes he'll have my in-laws make chicken soup for me, and he'll make me my favorite meal. So he's really good to me when I'm sick. I'm not gonna lie. All right. So typically, guys, I put this on before I cook, but you can do it like this as well. And that's it. Like that's your garnish right there. And what you can do is you can um, throw this into an oven, put the broiler on, and mm -hmm. let that caramelize even more. I think you should. I think I should too. So mm -hmm. we're gonna switch places. We're gonna okay. put our chicken down below on the below, on the bottom shelf, and we're gonna let the onion. And it's gonna be fast, guys. Sure. Look at me. I'm still sniffling from snorting that Cajun spice. <laughs> and for any of a, the, of any of you that are joining us right now, we are live at Love That Spice. I'm Mila, the girl in the kitchen, and I'm with my girl Marlena. Um, and we are cooking three meals today, and we're almost done, and it's been 27 Eight minutes. minutes. 28 minutes, yeah. All right, guys, so see how lovely that is? Beautiful. Okay. So now we're ready. I always like to taste, so... Mmm, so yummy. A little bit of salt. With some Himalayan salt, so a little bit goes a long way. Right, yes. Marlena? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. So in goes our cashew sauce, our faux Alfredo. So it's our dairy-free vegan Alfredo. And so see how it's thickened up quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is there's a lot in here. So I'm going to flip first. You want to get a lot of that out. So we're going to put some water in there. Okay. And then... We are going to use, what color do you want to use today, Marlena? I like we use? all of them. Okay, so we're going to use color. one green, one red, one white. Oh, so it's like, duh, it's like Italy. <laughs> Nothing gets by me, guys. <laughs> Crank up our heat. And you see? So, guys, this wouldn't work with dry pasta. This only works with fresh pasta because... It only takes about a minute to cook fresh pasta in boiling water. So this actually works out perfectly for it. So we're going to leave that alone just for a little bit. And just make sure you get all those veggies in there. Get all that beauty in there. And the other thing I do is I like to put lemon zest. So if I like garlic, I almost love lemon zest even more. Because I think that it gives food such a delicious pop of flavor. And then, of course, last but not least, what are we going to put in there? black pepper and cajun spice and cajun spice oh <laughs> cajun spice too <laughs> duh all right so we're gonna load this baby up because what the cajun spice is gonna do is give it a lot of flavor but it's also gonna give it a ton of beautiful color and we want that color and you'll notice i did wait till the end because i didn't want it to um i didn't want it to get bitter which marlena correct me if i'm wrong if you cook it too long we'll get a little bitter Unless it's just the grocery store brands that I've used. Well, with the spices, it shouldn't get better because but, it's just pure spices. Right, but the grocery store's brands well, will. you know, they put so much uh, in their spices that are artificial. It's a possibility they could get better. Right, exactly. So you guys see how creamy and quickly it got creamy, right? That pasta, guys, it's almost done. It's just, I usually use a, a tongs, but again, I forgot. So, this is. We have tongs. We do have tongs? Yeah. Okay, Marlena's gonna walk behind me now. So, last time that we did Facebook Live, we had all these people waving to us like we were crazy. And then my husband and my little daughter came by. Oh, super cute. Oh, there's tongs. Awesome. Okay. So, again, guys. The one, the one thing I can always tell you is taste your food. Uh -huh, hot, hot. Mmm, mmm, mmm. She is crazy. <laughs> I know. So yummy. Okay. 
I know, but I'm doing little pinches here. That's it. We're done. That's it. That is donezo. So we finish it with some more scallions on top. I love scallions, and it's it's kind of a Cajun thing, right? So the holy trinity of Cajun and Creole cooking is onions, green peppers, and celery, right? Celery. So we're like halfway there. A regular and the, time. <laughs> see, she knows. I don't. <laughs> But you got all that in the spice blend, so you don't have to yeah, worry about exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm going to give it just a little squeeze of lemon. Just, I love lemon. I love how it freshens up food. And that's it. And you can, if you guys are cooking uh, for the family, you can just put your pot on a little trivet and cook it and serve it like that. Again, you would serve it on paper because it's just your family, right? Like, no need to get fancy. <laughs> okay, let's check out our fish. It's not caramelizing as quickly as I'd like, but that's okay because it's more important for me for this not to overheat. So we're going to do that. But again, guys. Oh, look how pretty. Isn't that pretty? Pretty simple. There so this is. chicken needs a little bit more time. Just a little. Gorgeous, though. Barbara, hey, hold on. If you could understand that. The potatoes are gone. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna let that cook a little bit more, okay? But do you guys want to see us actually eat on camera? Is that a yes? You want to see us plate? Yeah, let's, let's plate. plate this baby up. Ooh. Plates are in here, right? Ooh, nope, nice. in here. Okay. There's a, one of the long platters. Okay. You want to grab that for sure. me? Okay, so we got a platter right there for you guys. Okay. All right. So it's very easy, guys. We're going to take... I have a big fork, so it's okay. So just take that out. If you do want to get fancy, we're going to actually... Do it like that. Can we see that? Yeah. Oh, we bro I broke a, p a piece off. It happens. It's okay. Now you have to eat it. I do. I do eat <laughs> mm. Oh, good. <laughs> I've had this all week. So, I'm um, I'm very used to this. And guys, it's, if you didn't see it, you will see it. I'm going to break it apart. I took a very small plate, apparently. And these, oh my God. I made this this week. And before I even plated them. I ate like, I made about two pounds and before I even played with them, <clears throat> I'd eaten like half of this. Okay, so I will be honest with you guys. I use Cajun Spice all the time. I buy it from the grocery store. And it is a lot more flavorful and a lot more spicy from Marlena's shop. Yay. So a long, a little bit is gonna go a long way. Voila! Look at that, me getting all French on you guys. And if you guys are brave, you can, oh, I have this here. You can sprinkle a little bit more on top just to kind of give it, see, a little bit more color, a little bit more flavor. Put some parsley on top if you like. That's that. How's that, guys? Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to flip it on Marlena and I'm going to actually have her try it. Oh, and guys, look at this. Look. Oh, yeah. This just goes right in the garbage. We don't even have to wash exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Gotta love right that. In the garbage. Gotta okay. love that. Marlena, where can I get some plates for us? Can we just eat out of the bowl? Yes. No, please. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm just can. kidding. We should. <laughs> We're hungry. I haven't eaten yet. Have you? Plates? Uh, no, absolutely not. There we are. See, guys? We're eating on plastic because it's just the two of us and we don't have to. And we time. can throw it out. <laughs> yeah, and we don't have to clean. That's the best part about this. Okay. So let's split that up. We're gonna get one for me, one for Marlena, and then I'm gonna have Marlena have some pasta, and then we still have chicken. Oh boy, the chicken is uh, going home yeah. with you. What? Yeah, it's going home with you. It's a lot of food. Okay. Well, my husband's on a diet. He's only eating eggs and vegetables this week. Oh. Don't ask. He is. Oh well, hey, you wanna keep it tight? I get it. Right. <laughs> and then. I totally get it. <laughs> And I don't eat chicken, and the munchkin has roasted chicken. Oh, that's right, you don't. Nope, and the munchkin has roasted chicken, so. Okay, guys, so some of the, oh, I love this pasta. It makes me so happy. 
And um, see, you can make a pretty little rosette like that. And again, you can do the same thing. Why do I keep doing this when I have this? What up? I don't know. <laughs> so a little bit on top. See? You can put some Yay. parsley on there. We have a little bit more green pepper on there. So we're going to put a little bit on there. Okay. And then I'm going to serve myself some right there. Okay. And I love that it has a pretty heaping serving of veggies. Like, look at that. Look at all those yeah, delicious. Yeah, that's a lot of veggies. It's a lot of veggies. It's, a, it's good for you. See? Okay. Our chicken, it's taking a little bit longer. So, the, guys, I'm just going to let see you know. It? Can we yeah. peek at it? Let's peek at it. Oh, so, the reason this love. chicken... Oh, I just totally <laughs> burned my partner. No, <laughs> she really did burn me. I did. So it's taking the chicken's actually almost ready, but it's Actually, taking a little beautiful. bit. Thank you. Um, it's taking a little bit longer because I turned the oven off. Yeah, I turned the oven off. <laughs> so it was supposed to be here and I turned it here and so thinking I went higher but actually I completely turned it off so that's my bad um, but I it does I'm telling you if you have a convection oven this will take 30 minutes you can speed this process up a few ways number one you can sear off the chicken first that'll give it a some beautiful color and B it'll kind of start the, the process going the other thing you do is you preheat your oven with your sheet pan in there okay one of the tricks for cooking potatoes that don't stick, by the way, is that you never put cold food in a cold pan. It's cold food in a hot pan, always. So when you preheat your sheet pan with your oven and you have a scorching hot sheet pan and you put your chicken right on there and you put your potatoes right on there, you're giving everything a boost already. So it's like turbo cooking. You're already giving everything um, a head start, basically, right? So when you do that, you're not losing any time. It's the same way... Um, like if you're uh, if you're boiling eggs, for instance, you want your eggs to boil from cold water to hot, right? But if you're boiling pasta, you don't want it to go from cold to hot. You want to put your pasta right in there uh, when it's boiled. So it's the same idea where you're, <clears throat> excuse me, where you're giving your food a little bit of a head start. Speaking okay? of pasta, I'm really aching to try this All right, vegan pasta. So let's pasta. do it. So let's do it. So we're gonna. I, I gotta we're, see if it lives up. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. So, and I'm she's not. Right, I won't Marlena? Lie. I won't lie. I swear I won't okay. lie. So get on camera so they can okay. actually see. Now you, you're seeing this. Marlena is eating vegan. Marlena, are you a vegan? V no, I'm a carnivore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a proud carnivore. Mm -hmm. Okay, here I go. I've like eaten half a plate already. You do your mm -hmm. thing though. Mm -hmm. So? Wow. It's pretty good. That was really good. I told you. Different. It, it's creamy. But you the know what? The texture's a little different, right? The only thing that's different is the texture. Uh huh. Other than that, I would take this over regular Alfredo. Well, one because it's got the chunky vegetables in it, and two. It's got a unique nutty flavor to it, so mm -hmm. I'm not really missing the the chemicals in the Alfredo. You know, I'm big on chemicals. And by the way, guys, obviously it's dairy free, so it's good for people yeah. who can't have dairy. But mm -hmm. this is a carnivore eating this, so I'm not trying to convert anybody, but it's pretty good. It, the doctors say it's good for you to eat meat free meals a few times a week, so why not make this a part of your week? This is a great lunch, you know. In Italy, they're skinny as hell, and they right. all yeah, they got and they all eat right. pasta. And I right, um, I actually taught I had an Italian chef, and he said that they eat pasta for lunch, and they eat like a three to four ounce portion. So they're not given f a pound of pasta, and they have a little bit of vino, and they make it a celebration. But they always say that unless it's a party, mm. they're going to be eating the pasta for lunch instead of for dinner. Okay, so we have some comments here. Vicky, um, let me know when you try it because it's absolutely amazing. Oh, and Vicky, I would love to use your kitchen whenever you want to do a little. Uh, Vicky and I used to work years ago at a catering company. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we've known each other. Maybe you for... can try some of this pasta. It's awesome. Mm. Vicky makes a lot of my recipes. So the pasta, and you know what else? It's got a slightly sweeter flavor because cashews it are does. a little sweeter. It does. But it's not like. Sugary sweet. It's like um, the same sweetness they get from it's caramelized like a onions. Sweetness. Yeah. 
So let me ask you, can you make this same pasta sauce with almonds? Um, yeah, but the texture is a little different oh, and the flavor different. is different. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, Better or worse? Worse. Oh, never mind. So it becomes less creamy mm -hmm. and almost more watery. So I'm no, suggesting like no. I but have the salmon. Oh, ho, ho. you like it? I love That's it. Right. The buttery texture of it, mm. plus the pop of flavor. Yes. Hold on, guys. I'm gonna <laughs> do you see that? Fifteen minutes, and it's it's literally perfectly cooked. Perfect. So, if you guys know salmon, you know that it's per that's perfectly cooked. Yeah. And this was organic, not organic. Sorry, wild, wild salmon. <laughs> I only buy wild fish. And this was wild Atlantic salmon. So, mm. again, because you're only eating four to five ounces, you can afford to go a little bit more, right? And the asparagus. So good. Very crunchy, very good. Nice pop of spice with the Cajun. 15 minutes, guys. Mm. That's all this takes. This is the best meal. Oh, and you can make this with cod. You can make this with Chilean sea bass if you're fancier. You can make it with sockeye salmon. You can make it with tilapia, even which I don't recommend, but it is what it is. I mean, hey, what's the big deal about tilapia? Mm, the farming has the farming practices has gotten a little better. A little, but not much, but a little. Not much, but I get it. If that's all you can find, that's all you can find. No, but, you really need wild caught. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you could just be eating crap. Right, right. Literally crap. Exactly. Just look up tilapia and you know, you'll know what we're talking about. You know about. what we're talking about. Yep, vino. You didn't pour yourself a glass of vino. How can you eat salmon with asparagus and pasta with no vino? Okay. See, we have vino. Anybody have any questions for us? Okay, again, we are at Love That Spice in Highland Park, Illinois. And um, if you have any questions, you can find her at lovethatspice.com. She also ships spices. And teas, they're all custom made, they're all made fresh. Like I said, this Cajun spice was made this morning. Um, anything else that you guys want to ask us, please? I want to cook with you too. Okay, thank you, <laughs> duly noted. Yay! <laughs> uh, Marlena actually does do cooking classes, cooking parties, cooking parties. Yeah. As do um. I. But um, I do it in a huge commercial kitchen, so it's a little bit of a different atmosphere here. It's really cozy. It looks like a gigantic living room, and you have these beautiful window panes everywhere. So, um, she does post them on Facebook. Your cooking mm -hmm. parties, right? She posts them on Facebook, so you can find her again. Just type in "Love That Spice" on Facebook. It'll pop but up. But you'll be doing some here too. I am Already doing there. one. I am doing one. We have to decide on the date, and I will be doing one too. I haven't decided what. It might be like Moroccan cooking or something with a ton of spices. Indian cooking. Yes. I haven't decided yet. But even this, I mean, Cajun cooking and just do really good spices. When you have good spices, you don't need much more. So you can tell this had like four ingredients, right? And it's absolutely delicious. But you know what I think we should do next or you should do next? What? You should do a recipe along with a drink. Mm. So we should like make a drink, like maybe a hibiscus martini or something. I guess you know? she'll be making the drinks. Yeah, we can include spices and all that good stuff. Come on. Uh, Marlena will clearly be making <laughs> All I know how to pour is tequila and wine. <laughs> I like both of those. And there you go. You ate all of that pasta. I did. She cleaned the plate. She did. I, I wasn't kidding when I say I really do love that pasta. <laughs> it's not, I make it all the time. I make it, sorry, it's getting really hot in here. So I'm taking this off. Okay, guys, we're going to be live for another two more minutes, and then we're going to head out. Um, anybody have any questions or anybody have anything to add? Just type away. And if you, if we didn't get to your questions, you can always contact me on girlandthekitchen.com. My contact info is all there. You can even comment on the recipes. And don't forget to go on girlandthekitchen.com. On the right hand side, there's a little subscription box. Subscribe, 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 because you will get this recipe emailed over to you. Uh, and if you don't get it, give me a call and I'll take care of it for you. Or shoot me a note or shoot me a text for the ones that have my number. You can find Marlena on lovethatspice.com. If you have any questions about spices or if you want a custom spice, she can pretty much get anything from anywhere. Right? But in order to get that 15% off discount, you have to mention Girl and the Kitchen. So that's the discount code, Girl and the Kitchen. That's the discount code. That's right. And then you get 15% off your order. You do. So... Essentially, it's your shipping or your tax. 
See? Exactly. <laughs> Alrighty. So, we're gonna sign off. Sign off. I'm just gonna show you guys this chicken before we go. Let me take you over. Sorry. Taking you away. There it is. It is piping hot. So, I don't want to eat it yet. But you see how there's no... I think we should pull it out a little bit so they can see it. Okay, let's pull it out. Hang on, guys. Let me get my... Um, oh, Our Marlene has got it. Oven mitts. <laughs> Our makeshift oven shit. I can't speak. See? So, you got a little sauce going there. Your chicken's done. Your potatoes are done. Everything's cooked. Okay? That's it, guys. We are all done and the recipe is right there below in the comments the other two recipes will be available only subscribers and they'll be available tomorrow night i'll shoot you guys an email blast thanking everybody for joining me okay so we're saying goodbye again i'm mila with the girl in the kitchen and we're live at love that spice in downtown highland park <laughs> see you later guys we'll see you next week if you have any questions or any other ideas for what we should do, let us know because apparently yeah. we're partners in crime now, okay? I think so. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Have a great night. We'll see you Bye -bye. soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>